everyone. Welcome to SS10 on January 10th. I'm here uh, with Wynn. I think Wynn. Wynn. Hi, happy oh. new year. <laughs> happy new year, bud. How's it going in 2021? Pretty good. Nothing really has happened like big time. Yeah, nothing big time happening here. Pretty low key. Back to homeschool. Get to go to school mm -hmm. on some of the weekdays, so that's mm -hmm. cool stuff. Um, today's lesson for Sunday school is about Jesus being baptized. Do you remember when you got baptized? No, because I was a baby. I can't really remember when I was a baby. I can really see. I don't remember. That's okay. You were a baby. You're right. You were a baby when you were baptized. Michael was a baby when he was baptized. Um, don't worry. I've got photos for those of you who weren't there. You'll get to see them as babies. It's great. And I'll get to see me. That's right, you'll get to see you too. Yay. See, I told you you were really cute when you got baptized. Mm -hmm. We even still have our baptismal banners for each of the boys that hung in the sanctuary for one year from their baptism. Here's Michael's. And here's mine. <laughs> and now we're gonna have Michael read you a Bible verse. While Jesus was living in Galilee, his cousin, John the Baptist, was preaching out in the country of Judea. The people loved John and came to see him and heard him whenever they could. Sometimes the crowds of people came to see John by the Jordan River. When the crowds came, John would tell them, change what needs what needs changing in your life. God's kingdom is here. The people would promise to change their lives and John would baptize them to show that they were a new person in God's eyes. I baptize you on the outside with plain old water from the Jordan River. But there is nothing compared to what and who is coming, John would exclaim. The one who is coming will baptize you with God's own spirit. With God's spirit, you will be changed from the inside out. While John was saying this, Jesus appeared. Yes, John to baptize him. But John wasn't so sure. What? Me baptize you? I think it should be the other way around, John said. But Jesus insisted, do it, John. God does amazing things in baptism. So John did what Jesus asked and baptized him. All the way under the water in the Jordan River, Jesus went. When he splashed up out of the river, Jesus saw the skies open and he saw God's spirit. It looked like a dove gracefully floating down to land on him. There was a voice too. The voice said, this is my son. He has been chosen and marked by my love. He is the great joy of my life. Thanks for reading that Bible story, Michael. So, I've been baptized. I've been baptized. You've been baptized. Jesus was baptized. Michael has been baptized. Michael was baptized. Many, many of you out there in the congregation, you've been baptized too. So we all are just one big happy family of God. We have some other friends that are gonna get baptized, don't we? Mm -hmm. What are their names? So, um, the first one, she's, she's only one or two. And um, we call her, baby Moo Moo and then there's a kindergartner that is named Bauer and then there's Wells that's first grade four or five and four he's first grader so, so he's probably like five or six maybe even going to be seven mm -hmm. so those are our friends you'll see a picture of us with them shortly they're getting baptized. We're super excited for them, even though we can't go to the service, um, but we're gonna celebrate and know that they are also part of the family of God. Yep. And that's it. Thanks for hanging with us today. Mm -hmm. To wrap it up, what do we got, Wynn? Well, we got a little funny cartoon that I'm pretty sure all of Sunday Kids Church we all like, especially the little ones. You got it. Fun little video to wrap it all up. Woo! Bye. Bye.
Hmm? Cease your joyous singing! Oh, hi, Victor. <laughs> um, Victor, are you crying? No. Are you having breathing trouble? Oh, I've never been baptized, Montgomery. And I never will be baptized, because I missed the window. Only babies are baptized. I missed one of the sacraments. One of the sacraments, Monty! There. I said it. You know now, and there's nothing I can do to take it back. Keep my shame a secret. Or tell everyone. See if I care. What's a baptism? Oh, secrets are wasted on you, Monty. Why do I even bother? I have a face people seem to trust. Hi, Monty. Hi, Victor. Yeah, hi, Clara. I've never been baptized, and I never will be. Why can't you get baptized? I'm nine years old, Clara. That's exactly eight years too old to feel the redeeming waters of the Lord. Are you sure? I feel like I've seen older people be baptized before. Yeah. The only way that would be possible is if this hypothetical person were a liar and dressed up like a baby, tricking the pastor, the church, and ultimately God. That's it. Thank you, Clara. You diabolical genius, you. I think you misheard me. Quickly, Pastor Pete is performing baptisms today. We must fashion an impenetrable disguise. Monty, present. You tell Pastor Pete that there's a new baby in the congregation ready to join God's family. What's a Pastor Pete? Wah, 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 I think the bonnet is too big. It's an optical illusion, Clara. The bigger the bonnet is, the smaller and more baby-like I appear. The baptisms are starting. Fiona, how are you getting baptized? With water, hopefully. <laughs> she can't get baptized. She wasn't dressed up as a baby. And she's well past the prime baptism age. Oh, Mr. Stanescu must be getting baptized, too. But he's ancient. He didn't even shave. No one will mistake him for a baby. Well, I told you older people can be baptized, Victor. <laughs> Name one other person. Well, Jesus for one. Uh, the Son of God does not need to be baptized, Clara. He was baptized by John the Baptist. He was about 30 years old. About 30 years old? So I can get baptized at any point in my life? Yes. Then why am I dressed like this? I still don't know. Well, this went from awesome to embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, for you. You're sitting next to a kid dressed as a baby. I'd hate to be in your shoes. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing Calls for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love
Welcome. I'm Pastor J.D. Daggart, and I would like to welcome you to the online worship service of First Lutheran Church of Kennewick, Washington. Thank you for joining us. If you are joining us on Facebook, uh, give us a heart or a like down below. And if you are joining us on YouTube, well, thank you for taking the time out of your busy lives to be with us. We're so glad you are. Thank you to the Manili family for once again doing such a great job in bringing us our SS10 early on in this video. SS10 is our Sunday school in 10 minutes or less each week. And I know that I have really enjoyed these segments and I hope that you have too. Um, I've heard from many people that uh, these segments are quite enjoyable, not only for the kids, but for the adults as well too. Thank you again to Joan and Jeff Stout who lead our service in music. Ron Lurch is our reader for the day, so thank you to Ron. I am looking for people who would like to share the piece or maybe be a reader or who would like to share their talents with the rest of the congregation in our worship videos. If you'd like to help out, just please let me know. Our next drive through communion will be this Sunday, actually today, January 10th from 11.30 to 12.30. We have managed to streamline the liturgy by broadcasting it on your FM radio in your very own vehicle. Then you can go through one of, two, uh, one of the two stations to receive the elements and then a quick blessing. Uh, thank you to the many volunteers that have made this happen over the last couple of months and make it happen this week as well too. We are also, uh, our offering envelopes and some devotional booklets are also will also be available uh, to pick up on Sunday as well too. So stop by and pick those up too. Today we will be celebrating Holy Communion during our service. So if you can't make it to the drive-through, then please be ready with wine and bread or suitable substitutes uh, just a little later on. We invite all who love the Lord to come and partake in the Holy Communion and to come to his table. No matter if those tables uh, may be cluttered with uh, steering wheels and seat belts, um, and no matter where they are. The newsletter uh, usually comes out on Friday afternoons, and the newsletter covers all the announcements and offerings of our congregations. Um, there is announcements about the annual meeting, about the weekly Bible study, and a couple other things as well too that's going on. So please check that out. Our mission here at First Lutheran is this, grow in faith, share God's love with all. And that with all is very, very important to us. There really is no exceptions for sharing God's love with all. It makes no difference what the color of your skin is, what language you speak, um, how you identify your gender or who you love. You are welcome here with us. And we're glad that you're able to be with us again this week. Every Monday morning, we have a Monday musing that's posted on our Facebook page. Um, it is something for you to consider and ponder throughout the week. The musings are also used in our, as our weekly guide questions that help us to get ready for worship. Hopefully these questions help us to just think about and maybe realize how God is active in our lives. Uh, here and now. So I invite you to take a moment to be still as we ponder this question. How do you choose to live out your baptism in your daily life? We start our service in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Since we have such a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ our Lord, let us with confidence draw near to God, that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of need.
Have mercy on us, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great mercy, wash away our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not remove us from your presence. Do not take, away, take your spirit away. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your spirit. Amen. Dear friends, God is merciful and gracious, granting forgiveness through Jesus Christ to all who confess their sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all the peoples. Give to the Lord the glory due his name, bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, tremble before him all the earth. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea roar, let the field be joyful. All the trees of the forest shout for joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth with righteousness and the peoples with truth. Our gathering hymn for this morning is As With Gladness Men of Old. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful in their calling to be your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading for the day is from Genesis 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. 
Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and he called the darkness night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The, Lord, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees wither and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessings of peace. The second reading is from the 19th chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 7. When Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who has, was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came down upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were, were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, Jesus who is the Messiah, and the Holy Spirit who lives and reigns amongst us now and forever. Amen. 
All week I have not wanted to write this sermon. And truth be told, this is actually the third or the fourth version of this sermon. It's been one of those weeks when you know you think you're moving one direction and then something happens and you just have to erase everything that you've done and start all over. Wednesday afternoon, I was working on this very sermon and then I received a text asking, have you seen what is happening in DC? Well, I switched over to the news to see and I have to say that I was horrified and sickened by what I saw. As to what was playing out on the steps of the, and in the building of the Capitol, I'm sure that you felt the same way, staring in utter disbelief at what was really happening. Horrified and sick. If that isn't a tagline for the last 10 months, I don't know what is. In, the last, in these last 10 months, we have lost so much that I really didn't think that we could lose much more. With the virus spreading, we shut down the church building. We watched as a young woman was killed in her own home. A young man was killed out when he was out for a run. And another man died on the streets of Minneapolis. Horrified and sick of it all. This summer, we watched as protests turned to riots, and riots turned to standoffs, and standoffs turned to confrontations. Neighbor against neighbor. Horrified and sick. This fall and early winter, the virus has soared to Disney heights once again. For all those who are infected and those who have died, even the promise and the deliverance of a vaccine has not curbed the tide of the disease. Not yet. Horrified and quite literally sick. And now a week like this one. I was horrified and sickened by the angry mob that breached the Capitol for the first time since 1814. And the mob back then was one of British forces ransacking Washington, D.C. during the War of 1812. I watched, horrified and sick, and so desperately, desperately seeking a word of hope. A word of hope that I, then I could deliver to you. Because I have a feeling that you are right here with me. Horrified and sick and desperately wanting and yearning for something else. For everything to be right and okay once again. In my despair, I turned to the readings for today once again, looking for anything. And I have to admit that when I first read them this week, I was not looking for a message of hope. But I found it or it found me is really more like it. In our gospel for today, we hear that the people of Judea were going out into the wilderness to see a man dressed funny and who ate a strange diet. And they were flocking out to him to be baptized, to repent and receive forgiveness for all their sins. As I think about these people, we have a lot in common with them today. They were seeking a new way of life. They were desperately trying to rid themselves of the past, of mistakes made and things not done, of relationships that were broken, of injustice that had become the norm. They were looking for hope. John delivers this message that is hopeful by proclaiming the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
This proclamation is both terrifying and exciting all at the same time. John is proclaiming that God is acting in his creation right here, right now. And John washed away the dirt from their fingernails in his baptism. But the one who is coming will wash us through and through. In our baptism of the Spirit, we are made new to the very core of who we are. John's word of hope is Jesus. Just as John had promised, Jesus comes to be baptized by John out in the wilderness, out in the dirty river of Jordan. And he was, as he was coming up out of the water, the heavens were torn asunder, and the Spirit, like a dove, descended upon Jesus. And these are the words that were heard. You are my, my, my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. These are the words that we of hope that we have been looking for. Out of the chaos of not belonging, the injustice of life, the hopelessness that lingers, God breaks through and makes a striking, striking claim. Because of our own baptism in the Spirit, we too are included in God's proclamation. Just as he claimed Jesus in those waters, he claims us. You are my child, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. We, you and I, are God's chosen and beloved children. We have been sealed with the sign of the Holy Spirit, and nothing, nothing can get in our way of being God's child. Not our sinfulness, our inaction, our treatment of others, or anything else will ever separate us from the love of God. I think this is the word of hope that we need for today. The one that we've been searching for, even as we struggle with the events of the world around us. Because of this common denominator of being God's child, you shine God's light and love on all others. We who are believers can be reconcilers who help to heal the divide in humanity. We who have been claimed by God, uh, by the God of the universe, can speak to the redemption of our own sinful selves, can repent of our own sinfulness, and rest assured that there is something far greater that lays claim to us than the horror and sickness that fills this world. A friend of mine helped to finish this sermon by reminding me of the words that St. Francis once prayed long ago. Francis prayed, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. These two are the words of hope that we so desperately need to hear over and over and over again. And quite thankfully, we have a God who doesn't mind repeating himself. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all people who are in need. For the Church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on the earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God may inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who are sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer sickness, especially Audrey Blagan, Shirley Nelson, Lance, Shirley Pierce, Jim and Joanne Landy, Shane and Terry Supley, Patty Fremont, Pat Rasmussen, Glenda Porter, Elena Etter, Karen Twinheffel, Susan Cook, Jan Anderson, Kim Brock, Mark, Parker, Ashley, Christopher, and Donna. All those who are suffering from COVID and all those who are caregivers of those suffering from COVID. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the congregation that is gathered here, for students who are returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God may experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithfully departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness may inspire us in all our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent. For the sake of all of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Please share this peace. Let us take time now to reflect on the many blessings that God has bestowed on us. And may we give thanks for each and every one. And let us now consider how we can bless others.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the salvation you have granted us to us through Jesus, the Word made flesh, the child of Mary, the light of the world, our Emmanuel. Send the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, that as your beloved children, we may welcome our Savior who comes to us in his body and blood. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come now with joy to Emmanuel's table. Feast at the banquet of hope and love. Please share the bread, saying, The body of Christ given for you. Next, share the wine or the grape juice, saying the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, God has shown you what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending uh, song for the service is Shine, Jesus, Shine. Thank you for joining us for our service. Thank you for making First Lutheran a part of your life. Please stay safe, stay well, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Go in peace, share God's love with all. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>